Hey guys, it's Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. Today I'm going to go in detail about this new Asus AI Mesh update they, they just did. And this is on uh, December 30th of 2020. They released a new firmware, at least for my main router. And my router is an RTAC88U. Then I have four different AI Mesh nodes. Three of those nodes are 68U nodes. And they all got an update. And then I have a Blue Cave uh, node. And that one did not get an update just yet but I think it's coming but they did a really big uh, change to their AI mesh system that now you can do a lots of configuration and management from the web interface you've never been able to do before and they added some stuff to the app so I'll walk you through what those changes are I'll show you them um, it's really cool because they've added lots of features that you never had before as an option on AI mesh so let me go through those and show you what they are so first, let's talk about the web interface. That's where the biggest change is, and that's where you know there's a firmware update for the routers, uh, at least for mine, my main routers, the um, the RTAC 88U. So log into the web interface. You know you can type in router.asus.com, and that should get you there. Uh, if not, you can type in the IP address, which I think is defaulted to 192.168.0.1. So as you log in here, it looks mostly the same, you know, and just uh, for you guys that don't know, once you log in on the top here up by this green app status, there would, would be a yellow exclamation point. And that's what I had and that told me that, hey, there's a new firmware. So I clicked on that. I read the release notes and I saw it was a big update for AI Mesh. And I was pretty excited since I use AI Mesh a lot. And in fact, if you wanna see, I have about four acres of AI mesh Wi-Fi coverage on my property. And I have four different nodes and then the main router. So that's five routers there that I'm using to get that coverage. If you wanna see details of that, you can click on my channel and see information about that as well as the T-Mobile home internet uh, that I just got started using as well. But for this, I'll focus just on the firmware update and what new features they brought and they are significant. So. If you used it before, you would click this AI Mesh node um, area over here. That would show you which nodes you have, and obviously if one dropped off, you, you could tell it here. You can also confirm if it's using Ethernet backhaul or wireless backhaul and what the signal quality roughly is. You know, you could see is it two bars, three bars, four bars. And then you could click on um, them, and you could see what devices were connected to it and what interface they were now they've added a couple more things so uh, you always had i think mac address connection priority and connection type listed and connection priority is where you can tell it to do either automatic uh, either wireless or ethernet or you can just tell it to be ethernet as priority so now it also gives you a firmware version and then a usb application so if you click this this just logs you in directly to that uh, node so that you can manage the um, any USB devices that you have connected to. So I think this is the first time they've allowed that. I, I don't have USB storage or anything plugged into nodes, so I, I don't use that, but that would be a nice feature for people that, that want that capability. So um, the big change, let's show you that, and that is this AI Mesh tab, which they had a tab here before, but it was definitely lacking in features. Now this is a big, big change. The first change you see, is you get a network map and this was something that was only available on the app before and it blew my mind that you couldn't see it on the web interface so now you can see I have three different colors in my case for how my nodes are connected back to my main router if I click this little icon this will give me a legend and let you know what each of those colors means so the top two which they look kind of like pipes I guess is how I would explain them those are Ethernet connections and then the glowing lines are wireless connections and then what's kind of interesting this is a side note there's this power line connection um, listed in the FAQ from ACES there's no mention of the power line and in fact they have a screenshot of this list and there's no power line in their screenshot so I think this was a mistake maybe on their part to include it um, and may, maybe they're coming out with some kind of power line um, kit to connect their nodes because I have Ethernet over power line for some of my node connections and you know there's no way for it to know that I'm doing that. So, you know, it 
when I have them hooked up that way, it doesn't show up here as a power line. It just thinks it's normal ethernet. So may, maybe Asus is coming up with something there. I don't know. But uh, so you can see here, hey, why do I have a yellow ethernet? Well, let me show you the green ethernet. That's the barn. And if I go to the network side, it shows you that I have green ethernet and it's because it's gigabit service. So that's a cat six direct cable from this router underground to my barn. So it loves that, which obviously I love it too. Um, but if I go to the pond house one, you know, it's like, Hey, you have a connection quality issue. You know, it's only, um, normal connection quality it could be improved. Um, what they're doing is they're laughing at me because it's not gigabit ethernet. Well, you know, my internet service isn't gigabit internet service. I'm lucky to get uh, 40, 50 megabits. So uh, <laughs> they mark it yellow, but really it means it's still a very good connection uh, that you have there. And then the other ones, uh, which are both green, which is good for me, is the actual um, um, nodes for the blue cave in this other 68U. And so what's interesting is the um, in, in here it tells you also what your speed is for your transmit rate so you can see you know they, they have three taps for each node you have the client list um, which is the same thing as basically on the main page you know you click it you get the you get pretty much um, the same information there but if you click it you do get a couple more details in here you get the device name uh, you can change the logo um, in here I think you can do that on the main client list as well but you know they're, they're trying to basically make it so this is like a management tab you can go in here and manage this specific uh, network all within this one page instead of having to go all around to different areas so you can block internet use you can do time scheduling now you can also obviously do that in some other areas of this web interface but now this is all um, easy to kind of navigate from the AI mesh standpoint so that's kind of cool. Uh, the one thing I don't quite understand they didn't include is um, they don't give you the transmit. Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah. So if you hover, I figured it, it was something like that. If you hover over it, it'll give you the transmit and receive rate and not just the signal you know, bar icon because obviously on the main page, they give you the transmit and receive rate. So this is kind of cool. I, I just learned something live. <laughs> so um, now you can get each device and how quickly they're... Um, their services. Now, the other thing is a management button. And this is a caveat because I'm on the blue cave device, which is that weird kind of um, square with a hole in the middle of it. And I got it because it was on sale, but it's obviously not as popular, I think. And so they don't seem to uh, update it as much with the firmware updates versus the 68U and my 88U. And in this case, this is one example where it's behind the ball. So if I go to management, I basically can't do anything with it. Uh, other than you could do in the past, which is basically what's the connection uh, priority, and then you can change the LED brightness on it. So pretty much worthless from a management standpoint. But if I go to the 68U, and now I'm under the management tab, now you can see some of their new features they've been adding. So one is turn LED on and off, which I don't really care about, but maybe if it's in your bedroom and you don't want a light on. But the cool thing is now you can disable the radio in either band on a specific node. And then you have the connection priority, which we've already talked about, the auto versus ethernet. But the cool thing now is they have a preferable backhaul. So on the barn, um, it does ethernet all the time, so it's never a problem. But like on the basement one, uh, I tell it, I want it to go in the blue cave. So I can go in here and change that. You know, Typically it would be set up as auto. And here I can change it to be um, any one of my nodes. So, you know, you might want to have it um, go to a specific node because maybe that node has an Ethernet backhaul or maybe, um, you know, you have some other reason you're trying to balance traffic across different nodes yourself for whatever reason. Now you can do that, and I think that's a really great thing they added. Again, here's that USB application um, button where you can go in there and, and um, manage a specific USB device on that node. Then you can tell it to reconnect, you can tell it to reboot, and you can remove it. So those are kind of the features there. The other headline feature is this new optimization capability. So if you click optimization and tell it to do okay, it's gonna go through and do its own optimization to see you know, what kind of backhaul it should do, 
how the, the nodes should be laid out, you know, as far as the daisy chain goes um, versus the star pattern, whatever is most efficient that their system um, figures out. For me, I did do it. It didn't change much, but my, my setup is kind of um, spread out and I have uh, some devices that are they're out of range of other ones so there's not a lot of optimizing you can do I really kind of spread them out and and try to use Ethernet or Ethernet over power line um, where I can as a as a backhaul so other uh, little area they have in this um, section is system settings and there's one really cool feature it's Ethernet backhaul mode and you can turn that on and what that means is for the guys that have 100% Ethernet as backhaul, they have you know uh, cabling ran throughout their house or whatnot, which I'd be jealous of. But if they have that and they absolutely don't want to use wireless as a backhaul, you can click this button and it won't try even. And I think um, I've had certainly some times where even my device that have Ethernet, it will for some reason revert back to, to wireless. So this would stop that from happening. Uh, I haven't tested it uh, on mine because I don't have all Ethernet, but. Um, it does give you this warning. Obviously, it says, hey, if you don't have a good connection, then um, you know your nodes might not uh, connect back to the access point. So that's like kind of obvious because um, they're not going to use the wireless then to go in there. Here's another example where they bring in uh, this feature I think has existed before. I, I never use it, but it's a roaming block list. But this is just a link back to that page on your so I clicked it and now you'll see this is just going under your advanced settings wireless and then there's a roaming block list and so you can tell it to for a specific device don't let it roam from one node to another node and you know the thing there's a couple of reasons why you might want to do that um, I think if you have like a gaming uh, console like an Xbox and it may be a switching nodes on you um, some somewhat randomly I think if you do that in the middle of a game it might cause some lag or some some issue and so this would be something you could say, hey, don't be switching between two nodes that are roughly the same signal quality. Just leave it on one. So that's another feature that, that they have in there. But um, overall, I really like it. I think some great um, adjustments. Now, they did make um, some changes or they added a lot of these changes into the app. So let me just pull up the app real fast and show you some of those updates. So now I just open up the smart app and I have it open up it already logged my map and this is what I really liked before that you can see this map and really helps visualize the um, the connection here and so you can see in here now they do have a little optimization and you can add nodes and I don't think before you could add nodes through the mobile app I think you had to do it through the web interface I, I could be wrong of that but um, they have that they have your traffic um, which they've always had before then they have your game um, optimization or quality of service uh, where you can pick what uh, prioritization you want to do but let's go over to a couple things here one is on the actual device itself if you click on it so this is now my main router that I've clicked on now you get these new buttons you get um, the optimization the quality of service up there you can now adjust the location directly here in the app um, easier and then again you have this Wi-Fi network name SSID so now you can click in here and I can change the um, um, different settings so the smart connect up at the top you can get a QR code so that you can take a picture with a device to connect to it. You can now change the network name and password. And then if we go back here, quality of service, I already talked about that. Um, it's just giving you some more information in here as well. So the other um, thing that was newer, and this might not have come at the exact same time, but I noticed in the family now, um, they now have more profiles that you can add for younger kids or different age groups should, should I say uh, I don't recall that being there before but so I think the main the main changes for me really was that um, they gave you more configurability in the actual system for the web interface all right that's my quick update on this new Asus uh, firmware update as well as the app updates for the AI mesh system. 
I think it's cool. If you like this video, feel free to like and subscribe. And then check out my other videos on my channel, especially if you're interested in this Wi-Fi mesh setup. I have an in-depth video that goes through how I have all my mesh things set up, how I have Ethernet over power line backhaul, Ethernet backhaul, uh, you know, 5G wireless backhaul, how I have it all set up, as well as I have information about my T-Mobile home internet that I use uh, now um, compared to my AT&T DSL. So check them out, guys.